I don't know, God was speaking to me about it that I wanted to do it again, so I'm doing it again. But last time, one thing my mom pointed out was I didn't share my testimony, so this time I'm going to share my testimony, so I'm going to get first time. So I'm 13 now. I started coming to church when I was like 10, and um, I got saved that year. I got saved at camp, and I'm just going to tell God I got saved. So um, Audra actually helped me get saved. I don't think she remembers this, oh. but I remember it. And um, so it was like, I think July, it was splash camp, so I was still like little. And um, I got saved that, it was Thursday. I got saved, I think, the day after my brother. And I remember just like saying, just talking about like, well, you're not saved and you need to get saved. Because like, all this stuff, like, it's all, it's all you hear. It's like, oh, if you're not saved, you need to get saved. Like, I love it, but, like, that was just constantly going through my head, and I was like, I need to do it. Like, mm-hmm. and I remember, it, like, as I was saying, so I looked over and I said, Audra, and they're like, well, if you're scared, like, get someone and ask them to go with you. So I was like, Audra, we go with you. She's mm-hmm. like, yeah, I'll go with you. So I walked up there. I don't remember who it was, but someone from another church, they helped me get saved, and Amen. I didn't say, this summer will be three years. Come oh, on. So, yeah. I'm really thankful for that. And I'm thankful for you, Audra. Thanks, Kayla. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's just how I got saved. So, Amen. Tonight, my message, I was really focused on, last time I was just focused on one verse. And this time, I'm focused on a couple more. And my only thing is just three T's. So, Amen. the first one is try. And the first verse is Second Chronicles 32, 31. <coughs> so it says, albeit in the business of the ambassador in the country of David, who sent who sent unto him to inquire the wonder that was done in the land, God left him trial that he might know that was all that was in his heart. So I said, God will let us do past by even if people are, even if like unsafe people are around us and gonna try to mess us up. And he could like put like obstacles in our path and our like walk with him so he can try us and make us better for him and make us better in ourselves and our walk with him. Mm, yeah. Um so God surrounds us with people for a reason to like try us and see like who we actually are around like for so many people are like so different around their friends at school and their friends that they have and how they are with people at church and he's going to try us and he's going to put us through that to see if we'll basically like, stay loyal to him and mm-hmm. only him and I just love that it says that Mm-hmm. And then next one about try is Psalms twenty six two. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it says, examine the Lord and prove me, try my hand and my heart. So I love that it says Lord examine me and try me because if he didn't like tell me what I was doing wrong or like show me what I was doing wrong in my faith, like in my walk with him, then I feel like I'd like continue to do like what I wasn't supposed to be doing or I wouldn't get any better with him. So I feel like we should get better with God like day by day because as we have our walk with him, we learn more and more just by the things different people that we listen to or the things that we see in church or like just the things that we surround ourselves with and um I want God to like, to like it says, I want God to examine me and tell me the things that I need to work on and I need to get better with. Because obviously I'm not perfect. Yeah. Thank God Amen. I'm not perfect. Because um, I mess up a lot of things. Let me just tell you that one. Mm-hmm. But I love that he can just like tell me what I need to focus more on in my walk with him and what I can do to make myself better and just to fulfill my heart for him and not for things that I shouldn't be focused on and things of the world because 
it's just like so good that God can tell me what I need to do and I can do it. So my next one is Job 23 10. <coughs>
We always need help in something, and we have to trust in God. Because our hearts are worldly, and we're not perfect. Mm -hmm. And God is perfect, and we can always trust in God because God knows when to get through everything. Amen. And um, as um, it says, he that trusts in his own hearts is a fool, but he still walketh wisely and shall deliver. So if you walk wisely with God, like I said, God's going to like, give you a reward. And it may not be now, but it may be later. But everything that we do, we always have to trust God because God's going to get us through it. We can't trust in ourselves because we're like we're going to fail. Like, mm -hmm. There's no way that we're going to live a life without God because he's just like, we always have to trust in him. And we can't like back down from him and say like, Oh well, God, you can't do this for me because God can do everything, and yeah. we're always like, He's always gonna be there for us. And like I said, even when we think we can't, we can because we have God. And it's just so amazing that even if we don't think we can do it, we can because we have Him. And as long as you trust in Him, you're gonna get through it. I promise. Amen. So. I know I'm turning off, but my next one is Isaiah 50, 10. So it says, Isaiah chapter 50, verse 10 says, Who is among you that fears the Lord that obeyeth the voice of his servant? That walketh in darkness and hath no light. Let him trust in the name of the Lord and stay upon his God. So it says, Who among you that fears the Lord? They they obey the voice of their servant. So that's like if you don't trust in God, you're gonna turn to something else. And like if you're not like following with God, then you're gonna go to something else. And it says, um, who among you who is among you that fears the Lord and obey the voice of a servant that walketh in darkness? If you're turning to something other than God and trusting in that, then, like, it's wrong. And not everyone wants to come out of the dark and say that what they've done wrong. And, like, <coughs> not everyone wants to say everything that's happened to them or, like, speak about it. But we can't turn to something other than God because God's going to get us through it. And God knows our weaknesses and our flaws and everything that we do wrong. Like, even if we don't think he knows, yeah. he knows. Yeah. Like, he will, like, always be here for us. Even if we think we do wrong, he's like, we're like, oh my goodness, God's going to hate us. Like, we're never going to be able to make this up. God loves us. God will always forgive us of everything. God will forgive us of our sins. And even if he knows what you've done wrong, he'll always be here for you. And I just love that because it says, let him trust in the name of the Lord and stay upon his God. So if you trust in God, then he's going to always do stuff for you and be there for you. And it's just really amazing that he's always going to be there for us even when we do wrong. And we think he's not there for us anymore. And it's just really amazing. I love it. And the next one is truth. That's my last two. So it's Deuteronomy 32 4. Truth. Yeah, truth. <clears throat> Deuteronomy 32 4. So it says, He is the rock. He is the rock. He is work in. His work is perfect, for all the ways of judgment, and God of truth and without iniquity, just and right is he. So, we always want to know the truth in everything. People are always going to lie to us and, like, not tell the truth all the time, because sometimes people think that telling the truth is just going to get us in trouble. Well, lying about something is going to get us in more trouble than telling the truth the first time. Yeah. And getting it over with and done. I've learned that many times. <laughs> we can say that. But sometimes we ask our friends, like, oh, how's your outfit look? Like, oh, it looks really good. And then, like, really it looks ugly. And, like, you go out and you'll be, like, look really bad. And, yeah. But 
It says, He is a rock, his work is perfect, for all of his ways of judgment, a God of truth, and without iniquity, just and right is he. So God's always going to tell us the truth, no matter what. And he's always going to, it says, I, sorry, I wrote down this. It says, this verse says, he is a rock, his work is perfect, all his ways are judgment of God. He's always going to tell us the truth, no matter what. Why, you might ask? Because he's, because he loves us. If he didn't love us, then he wouldn't tell us the truth. Yeah. And God loves us with everything. And if he didn't judge us, one day he's going to judge us for our sin, because obviously we're not perfect and we do things wrong. And God is <coughs> judging us now, but he will one day. And um, so for me, like, I was, like, I hate being lied to. Like, I know I'm being lied to all the time. Because obviously people lie, like, sin. Like, it's a human thing people do. And it's just worse to find out the, like, you have to find it out yourself than someone just automatically telling you the truth. But with God, he's going to, like, give it to you, like, right then and there. He's not going to, like, lie to you and, like, say all this other stuff and then tell you it. He's going to, like, be there for you and tell you the truth then and there than waiting to tell you after. Amen. So, I only have two more, and then, yeah, I only have two more, and then I'm done. Mm-hmm. So, it's John 1, 14. Yeah. Okay, so, it says, And the word was made... And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we we know the glory, the glory of our the glory as of the only begotten of Father, full of grace and truth. So, um, this world made of flesh, obviously, because we're human and we sin. And we live in flesh every day. Even if we're saved, we still live in sin because we're not perfect. And we should have God in our life. Even if we have God in our life, we're still gonna sin. And even if you think you might be, like, perfect and, like, do nothing wrong, yeah, well, you're being lied to. Because you're lying to yourself by saying that you do nothing wrong and you're so perfect. Because it's a lie. Only God's perfect. And I'm glad he's the only one that's perfect. And, um, even if we sin, he's still going to love us. Like, even though we do something wrong, he's still going to love us and stick with us and he's always going to be there for us because like like I said, even if we sin or do something wrong, then he's not going to like stop loving us and like just be like, okay, well I'm done because you lied to me and like, no, he's always going to love us but we should always tell God the truth like if we did something wrong, we should be like, we should turn to him and be like, hey God, I'm sorry I did this like we should repent to him and be like God, I'm sorry I did this wrong, but God, I did this, and I just want to say sorry for it, because that's just going to make our walk so much easier than holding on to it and carrying it with us and being like, oh, well, I should have, like, repented of this before, and then, like, whatever, and I should have did this, but we should praise Him with grace and truth, and I just love that, because, like, we should always praise God, and I just love it. So, my last one is Romans 1, 17 and 18. So, it says, For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who will do truth and unrighteousness. So verse 17 says, the one in righteousness should live in faith. And that doesn't mean we're never going to mess up, because obviously we're going to mess up. We should try our hardest to live by faith and do what's good for us and do what's good for God and what's right. And we should live for him. And then... Verse 18 says, The wrath of God is going to have the men hold on righteousness and the truth. We should always be righteous when talking about God. We should always tell the truth when 
we're when in God's work, so we shouldn't tell people like the wrong thing about God because it's obvious and they shouldn't do that. Yeah. Because they don't like tell someone about God, they go tell a bunch of people and like it's wrong to be your fault. But that's my little thing, and then um, so my ending. We should try. Hmm. We should be tried in the Lord's faith. Try to be consistent. We, mm, sorry. When we try, we're going to get trust for him. And he's going to trust us even more. And when we have trust, we're going to get the truth. So that's my little thing. And I'm going to pray and then be done. Dear God, thank you for this day. Thank you for letting us all come here. Lord, I just want to thank you for everything that you do for us, God. We're so truly amazing, and I just love you so much. And I thank you for everything that you do for us. Um, Lord, just pray someone gets something out of this message and applies it to their daily lives, and that we can always trust in you, and that you love us to death and nothing more. God, we love you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hey, give her a hand.